Here I am with one of my grail statues and some glue. <gasps> Don't worry, it's not as bad as you think. My name is Mr. X, this is the Extreme Channel. We're looking at another Extreme Collectible today and this is a personal grail of mine. So when we talk about grail, we don't mean something that's unattainable. It's something that we wanted a long time and for whatever reasons, whether it's availability or price, we haven't been able to get it. As you know, for me, price is sometimes not an issue, but this one actually was for the longest time. And what's ironic is I actually ordered another Megatron. So let's actually start talking about this guy before I get into that story. But this is Prime One Studios Megatron statue. And as you see, he is a beast. He is giant. He is huge. He is uh, gargantuan. Think of all the uh, verbs you want to throw in there. Not verbs, adjectives. Not an English major. Though we didn't learn much English. Remember that? In high school or college, English was more about uh, writing and literature and stuff like that. Now I'm just ranting. But let's get back to this guy. So Prime One Studios made 500 of these, and they originally retailed years and years ago for $1,949. And they only made one version, uh, from my understanding. So there's no exclusive. It's just 500 of that. And he's hard to find. Most of the time, if you're going to buy him secondhand, he's $2,500 to $4,000, really. Uh, every once in a while, you might get a better deal than that. I got him for $1,200 plus shipping. Uh, somebody was selling it, popped up on eBay. I have him on eBay alerts. And uh, he had some breakages, that's why. There were three different breakages I actually had to repair, and I've repaired them so you can't really see them anymore. Here was the most evident one. As you see, it's really not that bad. That's where the glue came into uh, part. And then also, uh, he has a light-up feature that doesn't work on this statue, which is fine by me. As you guys know, I don't do light-up features, but we'll look at all that later. So, scream and scream and deal. I couldn't resist. Uh, it, it's probably worth more money than that, but uh, as a buyer, I wasn't going to offer that up. Uh, seller was fantastic, though. Great communication, great shipping. Came with everything, the original boxes, the original instructions. And he was actually really easy to put together, which we'll talk about with design. So I purchased him, as I said, because I started going down this Transformers rabbit hole. And what's funny is I'll actually have a video about the different Transformer lines, which either has aired before or will air shortly after this, where I say how bad I want this piece. And then it was the very next day after I filmed that that I was able to get this deal. Uh, let's do dimensions before I forget. Because as you see, he is huge. And what we're going to do at the end... At the end of this video, we're actually going to uh, show him next to some other Transformer pieces. So the diameter of the base is about 21 inches, but as you see, his claw here sticks out quite a bit more than that. Megatron himself is over 25 inches. The base is about 6 inches. Crazy, crazy piece. So I started going down this Prime One Studios movie uh, Transformers. And really quick side note, if there's some quick edits in this video, it's because it's the weekend and there's some crazy emergency stuff going on in work, so my phone's been off the hook. But uh, I've been going down this rabbit hole with Prime One Studios movie Transformer pieces from the Michael Bay. And of course, if you're going getting all them, you want a Megatron. He's the main adversary in four, kind of five out of five movies, or five out of the six with Bumblebee. And I really like this one better than the last night for a few different reasons. So here's uh, the last night one, which we'll talk more about actually at the end of this video. But I like this one more. I like the way this one looks better. Uh, he was in three movies where the last night one that you saw was only in one. So, and then the one the last night was, he was not a big character. It, 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 I just finished watching it last night, actually. There wasn't a lot to him. So I just have a lot more emotional attachment, and I think this one looks cooler. And they run for about the same price, uh, original retail. But uh, finally got him really excited, and now I have some tough decisions to make we're going to talk about at the end. So Prime One Studios, they're doing this whole Transformers line. They're picking certain characters from here and there. And um, what's interesting is... I recently did review on Bumblebee, one of their newest pieces. Check it out right here. And there is significant difference on how they are engineering and making these pieces, 
which I found interesting, which we'll kind of talk about when we get to the design. But first thing we're going to talk about is the concept. And we're going to review this like we do everything. If you haven't seen the review scale, go check out the previous Transformer videos or any other videos for that matter. Concept is, is it movie accurate? Does it make sense? Does it look cool? Does it go together? And this guy starts with this giant, huge base. And it's more of a design issue, but it's too big. And they always have the classic uh, Decepticon or, or Autobot symbol on the front. And he's in a museum pose as we slowly move up. And he is in his robotic form, not his transformation form. This particular one is from Revenge of the Fallen, the second movie. But he has a lot of similar traits throughout. They, they changed Megatron just a little bit until the significant change in movie five. And you can see a lot of his uh, components of when he transforms into a tank or a jet. Traditionally in the cartoons and comics, Megatron always transformed into a gun. But it wouldn't make sense for the cinematic real-life movie, so that makes sense. And he's sitting there very angry, very evil. He has some switch-out options we're going to look at with some, you know, the blaster and his arms. And it's classic Megatron. Really makes me think of... <laughs> And as we went up it, you saw it's very movie accurate, not only from Revenge of the Fallen, but kind of all three of the first films he, he played a role in, other than Dark Side of the Moon, where he was more you know messed up from Optimus uh, uh, screwing him up as the uh, jet power, which I do have on order, so these two will look awesome next to each other. We'll talk more about that at the end. Very, very cool piece. I think you know this huge robotic futuristic base is what they're doing on all the pieces because... It all falls in line. Um, they don't match exactly, but they're the same concept. I think it's acceptable, but we'll talk more about the design issues in a second. Uh, I got to give the concept... I don't know. I'm stuck between a W, which is a 4 out of 5, or an X, a 5 out of 5. You know what would be really cool? You guys rate the concept for me. I can't decide. It's somewhere in there. It's either a W or an X. Here's the scale. I don't have an in-between one, so it's on a W now, but it may may very well be an X. Now let's talk about the design, and this is where I'm going to talk about some of the differences with the newer Transformer pieces I've noticed. Uh, there is not as many pieces to this guy. Uh, the newer Transformer pieces I've been unboxing have 35, 45, 50 pieces. He had, I want to say, about 20. His legs are separate pieces. His crotch torso then of course his arms his right arm has multiple pieces his head and then there's a few pieces here and there that go on uh, via key and magnet very i don't know why it's not coming off but very easily on the sides of the feet the middle of the feet there's a few other assembly videos out there he was really easy to assemble i didn't even uh need the instructions but i had him close by in case i wanted to be you know a four uh as i did in the other transformers so really easy to assemble Really quick, let's talk about the switch out features. Mainly it's on his right arm. You can have his traditional right arm draped down to the side. This is the same as his left arm. Or you can have this big ass blaster. And there's actually a few different ways to display this blaster. Right here you see it without a hook. So here it is with the little hook. And then a big ass hook. And this is the one I've had it displayed with. So I think that's props to the design. I think it's neat. They uh, mix it up a little bit. And I know they've do, done that on quite a few of their pieces. I think their barricade statue was the only one I've seen that doesn't have any switch outs. He does have a light up feature that's in his head. But uh, the seller told me that it didn't work. So I believe that. I haven't even tested it. But maybe one day I'll jump into that. But I don't really use light up features. Uh, most of the light up features on the other Transformers aren't very good anyway. He went together really well, no issues, no breakage issues. Moving him, he's extremely big, he's extremely heavy. I think the scale is accurate. Uh, he's almost twice the size of Barricade, but that's the same in the movies and Bumblebee. And we're going to look at him at the end. I'll show a picture where I have him temporary, temporarily displayed. The biggest design issue I see with this guy is the base. I think it's way too big, not only for circumference, but it's six inches high. But that can be a pro if you actually have that much counter space and you're putting him behind other Transformers, he'll be elevated even more. But most people don't have a situation where they have a 50 foot counter or shelf that they're, or 50 inch, sorry, 50 inch counter or shelf they're putting him on. 
One huge thing they've done with him that has been different is the uh, the peg inserts into him. So he has a female on the bottom of his foot and the base is the male. So you can take him off, I'm not going to do it, and put him directly on the table. I love that feature. I wish they'd done it with all their Transformers. They have not done it with the other pieces I have with Bumblebee. Uh, barricade and I'm not sure about lockdown I'd have to look at him but I'm in the process of rebuilding him I would display all the transformers without their bases I wish that was an option for every single one but the other ones the transformer himself has the mail has the key coming out of him so you could technically cut it off but then you would destroy the value of it I, the bases just need to go in my opinion I told you so as I was saying, I think the base needs to go. The other difference is I was talking about the newer pieces to older pieces. There's a lot more non-polystone pieces in this. Um, not a lot of them, but he, uh, it's not as flashy and shiny either. That's more of a character thing. But like you look at Barricade and Bumblebee, very flashy, very shiny. He's very dirty, which falls in with the movie. And it seemed like a lot more detail and sculpt in those, but this is still done really well. So for design, I can't give it a perfect because of the base. So it falls with a W, a rail. It's a very complex piece. They put it together well. Impressive by Prime One Studios. Our next two categories are paint and sculpt. And lately I've been doing so many pieces that don't have your traditional anatomy or traditional clothing on them even. So I'm kind of confused when it comes to sculpt. How do I rate this? How do I judge this? So I just kind of talk about it. So we'll kind of talk about the sculpt starting at the bottom, going to the top and throwing comments about the paint on the way and give you some guys some really nice stills because I couldn't find anywhere on eBay, YouTube, not eBay, where it was just some good overall shots of him. So I also may be talking about pieces that we're not looking at at the very second. Get over it. Let's look at this base. Not only is it huge, but it's not that detailed. I think they could have done a lot more circuitry and uh, futuristic stuff. It looks very plain and boring to me. Uh, the paint is good. It's very faded. The one thing that I don't like, it's similar colors, a little bit darker uh, than Megatron, but similar so that it kind of blends in with him. Just doesn't pop or stand out, but I definitely think they missed some opportunity on the base. They certainly got the size. Check out the Decepticon symbol on the front. There is a cool purple hint to this. So that's really the only thing that, that changes in the colorizations of the base. And even almost Megatron, there's a few reds we're going to see, but that's it. Look at Megatron's feet or wheels. These are kind of the treads from the tractor type thing he can transform into, which I really like that. I thought that was a great idea to have him transform into that. I wish they would have been more black like actual treads, but they do look very cool. You can see them from a few different angles here. And you're going to see a ton of different gray tones and silver tones. I think they did a decent job mixing it up so it doesn't look horribly uh, monotonous. Look at that sentence. Metal plates all around him. You see the same discolorization that you saw on the base. Makes him very old. And I think the fact that it makes him, you know, worn, battle, it makes him more evil in my opinion. Typically, you see heroes as clean, well-to-do. Check out some of the circuitry and gears in his legs. This is very cool. It's not as good as the other ones. I think they got more advanced as they went along. But as I spoke about in the Bumblebee review that you can check out right here is... Uh, I don't know how accurate this is to the movie because you never really see them in a still shot or this parts of their body. I would assume Hasbro or whoever made those movies when they signed off on this... They made sure it was pretty decently accurate. One other thing, check this out. He has uh, alien writing on him. I assume this is alien writing. I can't read uh, any type of characters in another language anyway. And it's a few different places on him. And again, I, I'm assuming it's from the movie. I don't really see a need for it unless we're wanting to make sure it's movie accurate. On the back of his legs, you see almost like thrusters. They're not the main thrusters that we'll see on his upper back by any means speaking of which let's take a look at that right now so here's those thrusters i was talking about pretty cool because he does turn into uh i don't think it's really a plane it might be a plane but a spaceship an aircraft of some type 
looks really cool and this is back so you'll never see this even though this could be a center uh, display piece and below it, what I really like about this Megatron almost to me this is like a reptilian exterior endoskeleton and here you see a few more colors some coppers and browns mixed in there you see some maybe exhaust ports and and this armor that's kind of scaled on there it's layered on there I he, he's much skinnier right here which makes his whole body disproportionate, but that's how he is. And the same thing about the front. Kind of these uh, armor plates on top of each other. You see some, uh, some of the circuitry of what he transforms into below. And a little bit, I don't know if you can see it in the pictures yet, but this is where you see some of the red. Some of the other red, let me jump to the uh, kneecap here. This is where some of that red uh, is. When This was in the movie too, and I don't think it's his blood. Different Transformers had different blood colors. Most of the time I feel like it was green. So I don't remember what this is stained for, but I do remember it from the movies. Let's look at his arm here. One of the things I really liked about Megatron uh, in the first three movies here were these types of hands he had. Uh, huge, you know, very scary uh, spikes coming out, almost like he had to repair them or create them. I remember when he was holding down Sam Witwicky saying, you know, he wants to tear his flesh from his bones or it feels good to, f whatever that was. It's kind of sexual in nature, but very cool looking. And it's hard to get some close-ups of these because they're, they're very skinny. But his other arm, check out his blaster and hook. This is very cool. You see the same colorizations that you've seen everywhere else. They did a nice job uh, showing a, a, some circuitry and gears. I wish there would have been more though. His shoulder blades, very similar to a lot of the armor plating all over. Uh, you see some of those copper colors on top of these silver and black. One shoulder is huge. Traditionally, the shoulder you would block with. Here's his portrait. Very movie accurate, very cool. I, I feel like his head's too small, but I think this falls in line with the movie. So I wish they would have... I don't know. I know they have to follow the movie, otherwise they'd have haters. But the head looks small on the entire body, scale-wise. But they did a good job. Very accurate. Definitely Megatron. And I also got the replacement bust, the battle-damaged one, from um, Prime One's Winter Sale for like 120 bucks shipped. So I, can, I believe I can switch that out with him. I'll show you guys when he arrives. So I originally purchased that bust. Here's actually a quick picture of it right here. Because I don't know if it switches out, but I was going to lay him at the head of Optimus Prime because I didn't think I'd ever be able to get this piece. So instead, what I did is I pulled the trigger on Prime One Studios' The Last Night Megatron. Here he is again. And this is what I need your guys' help with uh, at the end. So we'll come back to that. But first, let's rank the paint and sculpt on him. Um, starting with the paint, I think... It's too monotonous, and I understand that Megatron is monotonous, but they could have added some some flair in the base, maybe some contrast in the gears. It's all copper, silver, and black. They needed more black. I think the paint's very nice. It's a very nice paint job. It's not amazing. But I do think the sculpt is much better. The intricacies, it, while it's not as good as some of the newer pieces, I can't judge whether it was not as detailed because it was... Uh, trying to be movie accurate but I do love the sculpt I think this is a W a rail for the sculpt for sure so overall does he have the X factor is it a grail it's not a grail it's not I think some of the things I, I, ha I can't overlook is the size of the base I would have liked you know more action out of him other than standing there with that big hook I, and some more details in the circuitry and some variations in the color. Uh, he's so dark. It, it doesn't display well. A dark statue just doesn't. But it is definitely a rail. It's a four out of five overall statue. It's worth every penny I would pay retail. I haven't paid you know 2,500 or 3,000. I wouldn't pay that, but I'm so happy the deal I got on him. And now I have a big decision I need you guys to help me with. So this is what he looks like temporarily with the other guys. I have him here behind Barricade. So characters from semi-same movie area, era. Fighting Bumblebee. There is no doubt in my mind I'm keeping this piece. 
do I continue going with The Last Night? Here he is again. And whenever I ask you guys, should I keep or get rid of it? You always say keep because you want to see it. So I really want your opinion. If you were me and you had the resources and two, two grand is a lot of money, no matter how many re- much resources you have and you have a space, you know, everyone runs out of space eventually. Would you just stick with him or would you get both? I have almost no emotional attachment to this. And recently, uh, a great collector on Facebook that has the whole Transformers line, I asked him which one he likes better. He said the original one. I think there's some really cool details in here, like his portrait and a lot of the red circuitry that I am really loving. But uh, I don't think he'll beat this one. So do I get both for $2,000? We could do an extrumble, and I'm not buying him just to do that. So please let me know in the comments what I should do, and don't go, just buy him, just buy him, especially because you want to see him. If you were me, what would you do? $2,000 is, you know, half of a family vacation, so I'd much rather have the memories. Uh, I kind of answered my question for me right there, but I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks so much for tuning in and enjoying this rail. Almost, It's still a grail to me. It's, for me personally, it's still a grail. Uh, so happy I got it. Take care, guys.